very special guest today. I'm actually really happy and excited to introduce Dr. Paris Kidd. Actually, I'm going to let you introduce Dr. Paris Kidd because you have worked so closely with him in developing our supplement line and you are so knowledgeable and I've had so many people ask us questions. We're just so honored to have you here to be able to answer these questions. Well, Why don't you tell them? Well, I stalked him. I know. So that he would come and <laughs> work so with great. us. Um, when we decided to develop Brain and MD, I wanted the best scientists in the world to help me develop our products. And at the time, uh, Dr. Kidd was the chief scientist for Doctors Best, and he, you know, because of his own contract, he couldn't do that. Uh, Paris is a PhD in cell biology from UC Berkeley. He's been in the supplement industry 35 Five. years, and he's he's just one of the sweetest, brightest. Uh, most well-respected people in the nutritional supplement industry. He is the chief science officer for BrainMD. We are grateful to call Harry. him our friend. Yes. Welcome. Uh, thank you very much. And it's really a pleasure to work with both of you. Thank you. And we're so excited because I get so many questions. And I, I know generally some general information about supplements, but I want to be able to really supply this information in more detail to, the, to our people because they're really curious. They're hungry for a lot of information. Right. Uh, so can we start off with, like, why should people take supplements? That's, right. that's and, the big question. Or portion. should they? Or, you know, what a lot of family doctors will say, right. it's no more than expensive, expensive urine. Yeah. And you don't need them if you have, and this is the kicker, if you have a balanced diet. Right, right. Which and, no one does. And let me, let me preface this by saying that uh, there's a lot of, fake information yeah. available to people now. And there's a lot of uh, warfare between different parties about dietary supplements. So I follow the science. I've been following the science all this time. Science is what I do. So I go to the primary sources to get all this information. And one thing that's very, very clear is that uh, survey after survey indicates that all over the world, people are not getting sufficient vitamins and minerals from their foods. Very, very clear. There are markers for the availability of vitamins and minerals, and there just is not enough being provided by the foods. Okay. To a large extent, because the foods are way poorer quality than they used to be, they're a lot more calorie dense and a lot less nutrient dense. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, it's very important that people understand that vitamins and certain minerals called essential minerals are important for life. If we don't get them, we die. So, right. so these are substances that actually run our enzyme systems that make energy from our foods and allow us to use that energy to maintain our tissues and to grow and to do all the things that make us human. So, so these are, these are not arbitrary um, um, luxury items. These are items that are absolutely required for health, and we differ also in our genetic makeup. Right. Everyone has a unique genetic makeup, and everyone has genes that don't work as well as they should. <laughs> Therefore, each person has each person will have certain increased requirements. Right for particular vitamins and minerals. And therefore, it makes for a very, very good preparation. I call it nutritional health insurance for people to take supplements in order to be sure that all of the vitamins and minerals they're getting. Then beyond that, uh, we have other types of dietary supplements, such as many herbals that have been shown to improve function when they're taken uh, under um, controlled circumstances. And so as I follow the clinical trials, what I'm seeing is that there are literally thousands of clinical trials conducted at the best academic and research centers around the world that are showing that vitamins and minerals and herbals and other types of dietary supplements actually improve health. Right. So we can go from the concept of sort of surviving all the way through to optimal health. And for those of us who deal with the brain, we want to have our brains working as best they can. Therefore, for BrainMD, I'm assisting you to make 
the very, very best supplements that we can to optimize the functioning of the brain. Another factor is that uh, stress, the stress of living in today's world, yes. Uh, including all the chemical pollutants yes. to which we're exposed, emotional stress, uh, stress from infections, and stress from whatever Not uh, source, lack of sleep, etc., depletes nutrients. It draws nutrients from the body. So does alcohol. So does smoking, even passive inhalation of cigarette smoke, and also a lot of medications. Yes. Some of which people take for granted. Birth control pills. It will deplete nutrients. Yeah. Birth control pills. Um, um, acetaminophen. Yeah. I won't, I won't give the brand name for that, right. but people can easily figure out what that is. Acetaminophen is terrible on the liver because it, it, it draws many right. of the liver nutrients out. Ibuprofen. So too. for all of those reasons and for other reasons, it's very a very, very good idea to be on a dietary supplement so regimen. So it's like an insurance policy almost. Yeah, yeah. I call it nutritional health insurance. Right. Yeah. So I love that. So you actually read my mind and you answered like most of my questions in that one, <laughs> which is great, which is why I love, like you're just amazing. You're this wealth of information. Information. Um, you because it's not me. just diet, but it's true. What you yeah. say is so true. People yeah. will say, but I eat healthy. Okay, that's great. Yeah. But are you sleeping? Are you getting super high quality food? You're not polluting your diet with other stuff. Are you sleeping right. enough? Are you uh, meditating and praying and not well, exposed to stress and environmental just toxins? Take the, are, are you eating? Because when people tell me I have a really great diet, right? Don't, don't you remember for oh, the, yeah, Dan no, no. For the Daniel plan? Is great is we not went great. into this kitchen of a woman. weren't you there with yeah, me? Yeah, I was. And we she said she was a pescatarian. You know, she ate just vegetables and fish. And then, but there we, was like we pull out Captain <laughs> Crunch, and, <laughs> and, the, and then all the chocolate she had hidden and around, and and, and according to the CDC, ninety three percent of the U.S. population does not have five servings of fruits and vegetables right. a day, the minimum right. required to right. get the nutrition you need. Right. And a, a study we did here at Amen Clinics, we looked at 50 consecutive patients, 49 of them had suboptimal levels of omega-3 fatty acids. Right, so you can test for this. We know, yeah. I mean, you can be tested to know whether you yeah. are where you're at with your nutrients. Right, and but, more than 90% of Americans aren't right. getting enough vitamin D and more than 50% aren't getting enough magnesium. Well, that's what we do here and, is we test people. We want to uh, know. We're not just going right. to give you randomly, willy-nilly. Right. Uh, right. But one thing I love that you said was genetics. Okay, so I'm one of those people. I don't like it, but the fact is I was born with lousy genetics. Okay, It just is what it is. And I know people will often say, but that's not fair. I shouldn't have to worry about that get over it. Life's not fair. That's what I tell my daughter all the time. It's like, fair is a right. place with bad food and farm animals. Right. It has nothing to do with life. Right. And, <laughs> okay. and, so, and Pomona. Right. right. Get <laughs> yeah. over it and just yeah. fix it. And I've do had genetic issues do. since I was born too. Right. But just think about the vitamin folate. Right. Some 50% of Caucasians have a mutation in the enzymes that manage folate. And there are some 40-some mutations known just around that vitamin alone. And right. then there are mutations known in, in the enzymes that manage all of the other uh, vitamins and essential minerals. So we're with 25,000 genes minimum, we're bound to have mutations. And so each of us has to be sure that we're getting the full allowance that's recommended uh, by the authorities and more. Because after all, this is the human condition, right? So we know that we're going to go across the lifespan and then um, our health is going to be challenged more and more as we get older. And so having a good diet is, is, is one part of it. Having a, a good supplement program is another part. And then comes physical exercise, mm -hmm. mental exercise, clean lifestyle, getting enough sleep and all of that. And then we keep our fingers crossed. And, and hope we can have a really full and happy and productive life. So why do you think so many people fight taking supplements? They think they shouldn't have to, but why do you think that when they know it's that easy to just sort of fill well, you, that gap? Well, you know, I've been doing this for 30-some years, and there has been an ideology, there has been an, an idea system that poo poo supplements. And uh, that has evolved, and I think the American public um, through their own instincts, are finding that when they take supplements, they feel better. Right. And so even the dietitian community, who initially, 30 years ago, were talking about not um, taking supplements, 
um, the vast majority of them now have a supplement program, mm. and those are the most conservative nutritionists of, uh, of all, as, as, you, as you probably know. Well, the know. editors at the New England Journal of Medicine yeah. and JAMA have published editorials saying a multiple vitamin a day was essential to help prevent chronic illness. So in your mind, what are the minimum things people should take? Uh, Thank you so much for asking. You're welcome. A really, really good, powerful, well-rounded, well-absorbed multiple vitamin mineral, such as Brain MD's Neurovite Plus, which which I've um, worked with Daniel to get to the point that it's a highly optimized multiple. And then they should also take omega-3, omega-3 EPA right. and DHA, uh, which are practically vitamins because we can't make those in the body. Uh, we can make small amounts, but they're practically insignificant. And so we have a product called Omega-3 Power, which is very highly concentrated in EPA and DHA. It doesn't give that burp feeling when you right, take fish it. Burps. And we screen it for more than 250 potential pollutants. And so it's a very clean, very beautiful product. And so, so I, I take both in, of those uh, myself, actually. One of the big box and stores. And I give them to a lot of my friends. Yeah. So two capsules is 2.8 grams of fish oil, 1,440 milligrams of EPA, EPA and, and DHA. DHA. Right. So I was in one of the big box stores uh, last week. And so I just went and looked at their fish oil. And you had to take 10 of their capsules yeah. in order to equal... Two, right, right. Uh, so you're not saving money in, in essence. Well, not at all. But you're also irritated taking tap. Oh, I can't. Yeah, not that'd be terrible. All. What about vitamin D and probiotics? Well, um, vitamin D is is very very important for all of the tissues and including for the brain, and perhaps immunity. especially for the brain. Well, it used to be that vitamin D was thought of as the bone vitamin, right? But actually, um, we have um, systems in all our tissues that respond to the presence of vitamin D. Okay. And vitamin D is absolutely essential for brain development and for um, the processing of information in the brain. It's, it's important for the cardiovascular system, right. the heart and circulation. It's important for immunity. It's important for the joints. Every organ system um, features some role for vitamin D. And that's partly because it's actually converted to a hormone. And uh, the surveys indicate that, that because we're covering up so much uh, because of fear of skin cancer and all of that, right. uh, there's a, an epidemic of deficiency of vitamin D all around the world. Yes. And also people who have darker skin uh, tend to screen out right. um, ultraviolet and therefore don't make as much vitamin D as they could. So vitamin D is really a, a crucial vitamin. It's, it's a master hormone. It becomes converted to a master hormone in the body, and it's absolutely crucial for health. And did I hear you say 90% of people are low yeah. in vitamin D? Right, right. And so we almost have a five, we uh, almost everybody yeah. that I we, test We have clinically. a 5,000 IU vitamin D supplement. Which I love, yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. and I, I take one of those a day. And, and in Neurovite Plus, there's yeah. 2,000. Yeah, so if you Plus take them both, two. it's 7,000. People go, yeah. oh, my no, gosh, that's, that's so much. No, that's the only way that my vitamin D has finally been stable is taking that 7,000 a day. Right. Not everybody so has to. So what I want that, you but. to do is, before you just go out and take 10,000 units of vitamin D, go get your level checked. Right. And I live in Southern California. The sun is out 330 days a year. My level was 17. So right. normal is between 30 to 100. Optimal is more like 50 to 100. And under 20, according to a recent study, is associated with twice the risk of cancer than those who have vitamin D levels over 40. So how stinking simple is this? Measure your level, optimize it. So initially, because my level was so low, I took 10,000. And you know, one of the big benefits for me, my appetite went away. Oh. And I'm like, why did that happen? And then I read a research study that said when vitamin D levels are low, leptin, the mm -hmm. hormone that tells you to stop eating, doesn't work right. anymore. So you actually become leptin resistant. So giving you more leptin is not going to help. Vitamin D turned off my appetite. And then I was able to lose the weight so I didn't become a dinosaur, you know, big body, little brain. You're going to become extinct. Well, and I think um, we can't underestimate probiotics 
also in that mix, right? Yeah. Now, probiotics are all the rage these days. And, you know, people hear that they have, you know, a thousand species of bacteria in their intestinal um, um, contents and that those bacteria weigh as much as three pounds. And it's very, very true that those bacteria are built into our um, health. It's, it's called symbiosis, which is where we give them shelter and perhaps we give them certain foods that they need and then they process, help us to process foods, they help us to absorb foods better, they help with our immunity, they help with our brain function, they help with our mood and all of that. However, uh, when a person goes to look for a probiotic supplement, they really need to find out if that particular supplement or the particular bacterial types that are in the supplement have actually been tested for human benefit. Oh. Okay. That's interesting. I know yeah. that's true for dogs too. They don't, yeah. it because, has to be good for that species yeah. of. <laughs> right, right. So, so in, in these bacteria, you have, you have uh, the genus, the species, but then you also have the strain. Mm. And even the strain level is important. Interesting. So uh, what, what we did actually was uh, identified a combination of two special strains that have been shown in clinical trials to improve brain function, even as they improve digestive function. Mm -hmm. And we carried the, 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 the very clear, specific combination that had been used in those trials. And we called it pro-brain biotics. I like that. And so that's one of the very few um, probiotics that are available for brain function. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk about more uh, specific issues around dietary supplements uh, for different, uh, to support different functions in the body. And then uh, we're also going to talk about kids. Stay with us. Mm -hmm. 